Um, good evening. We're going to call tonight's regular board meeting to order at seven o'clock. If we could rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Go ahead and take roll. Ms. Berkmeyer? Here. Mr. Green? Uh, excused. Mr. Richards? Here. Mr. Moses? Excused. Mr. DeRue? Here. Mr. Benatelli? Here. Ms. Knox? Here. Thank you. Um, I will accept a motion for approval of tonight's agenda. I'll make that motion. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes. Our Student Congress uh, member is not here tonight. Um, so we will move to the superintendent's update. Yeah, I just have two items that I shared with you. The first is just a, this, this also double as our communications. Um, it's a memo outlining the results of our um, bond sale that was occurred earlier this week. And we were fortunate we had going in, they told us we had at least four bidders would be lucky. We ended up, as you can see on the backside, we had nine bidders. And um, essentially, that's they said that's the second highest that they've had in the last year. So we had a good response to that. And um, based off of our credit rating of the, the A minus rating as a district and then double A rating um, for participation in the Michigan school bond loan program. Um, so we came in pretty well on that and the refinancing as well. So we coupled with this, the 2013 refinancing for bonds. So back when that bond was passed, interest rates were between three and 4% over the, the life of the, those bonds. Um, we were able to lower the yields and get those between 2.8 and 2.95 over the, the life of this. So that's basically, we should save us about 1.3 million for the refinance. And then um, the rates that we got on the new bonds um, came in under what we had estimated. So you can see for a total of an extra $306,454 um, that we can put towards um, the bond. Any questions on the bond sale? Okay. The other thing that I put before you is basically it's something that we're talking about as our goal through the bond is to begin construction. It would be in September with the high school. And so we, our, our goal is to try and stay out of the peak summer season in, in order to hopefully lower the costs and to give more flexibility. So part of that, we had in the bond to do um, athletic, some athletic structures for um, the out by the football field, because right now we know that the teams don't have any place to go, and they have to go into the school at halftime, which is a long way. And, and we also need storage for things that we currently have in, in the high school area, specifically where the auto shop's going. And so our plan is was to build um, these structures and then put things in there. And then obviously during games, those items that are used like the gators and golf carts and so on are out. And that would give the team some place to, to go at halftime before games. So in order, to, we went out separately because in the bond, they had ballpark to do about $500,000 for these, but we were looking in order to kind of keep the timeline we, Todd has been talking to some companies and, and we were able to get a quote for a building that it's basically for the building itself would would be about $26,000, which is actually under our um, bid threshold. So what we're looking at is to do these um, ourselves outside of that, that will free up money in the bond as well. And it will help us keep our timeline because now instead of these would be done prior to the September construction. And 
they can start immediately on the high school areas instead of having to do those first and then move the things out. So um, just if any comments or questions or, or thoughts on this, that's kind of where we're at. It's the reason I bring it tonight, because I know we have a building and site committee on Monday is the, the pricing changes at the end of the month. And so they're giving us a deal if we if we can begin the process. We, we wouldn't uh, take delivery of it until the summer and have it constructed, but that's kind of where we're at. Other than that, that's all I have. Okay. Um, we'd move next to the hearing of the public. Um, I don't have any submissions for tonight. Uh, so we'll move next to communications. No further. So next we have our consent agenda, which tonight consists of the approval of the January 25th regular meeting minutes, the personnel report, the finance report, and the bills payable for January of 23. Uh, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented? So moved. Is there a second? I'll second. Any discussion? Go ahead and call the roll. Ms. Knox? Yes. Mr. Mendatelli? Yes. Ms. Berkmeyer? Yes. Mr. Richards? Yes. Mr. DeRue? Yes. Okay. Uh, motion passes. So next we'll move to new business. We have our K-12 educational goals presentation with Mr. McDonald. Good evening, board. Um, you should have in front of you uh, the a, a copy of the uh, goals uh, progress report. And e each year now, in the last two, we've been required to uh, present to you our educational goals and give you an update on our progress towards those goals. Our goals are uh, based on student growth in both reading and in math. And just a little bit about uh, the goals as we look for growth, we're kind of at the mid-year point. So we have some baseline data to show. And then by the end of the school year, I'll be able to come back to you in the spring and show you our spring results. And then that's really when we'll get to see the fruits of the labor uh, from our teachers and students. But again, our goal is based on growth in the areas of both reading and math as measured by NWEA, which is our benchmark assessment. Some strategies that we put in place uh, to help achieve those goals, I'd like to point out, um, we've uh, added IXL licenses. We started this last year where we had a thousand for the district, kind of targeting our at-risk students and a lot of our elementary students uh, in general. We upped that to 1,500, so we had a 50% increase in those licenses. I think last year at this time when I presented we had um, students had done about just over 500,000 questions on that. And this year, we're at 1,400,000 uh, uh, in 50. So uh, we more than doubled uh, where we were uh, with the um, amount of uh, students doing questions in IXL. Um, we also um, have added... Uh, before and after school tutoring. Uh, so more teachers, we've always done before and after school tutoring uh, and, it, and during tutoring uh, at lunchtime, but the amount has increased uh, quite a bit. We've also, um, you know, have literacy specialists and tutors at each elementary building, academic coaches at the secondary buildings. And as you know, additional counselors and social workers. Uh, so th all of these things, including focusing on our literacy essentials during the PD days and NWEA uh, data analysis during those days and throughout other meetings. In the report, you can kind of just see an outline of what our goals are uh, and that the, the um, benchmark assessment is required K through eight. So there it's, it's presented a little different in the elementary to middle schools. At the high school level, we have the same goals, um, general goals of growth in reading and, and in math. And um, we are seeing evidence of um, reaching those goals, uh, but presented in your packet today, like I said, you are seeing the baseline data from the fall tests. Um, since the, the tests, uh, 
I, you know, updated from last year. I can tell you it's fairly similar. The baseline data from last year, there's uh, some increases in, in some areas. And then again, the, the real telling tale will be in the spring when I'm able to present to you um, the spring data and see the growth. Um, I was able to get a, a glimpse just to share with the board a little bit of the winter data in um, we have seen significant growth in, in almost all areas and are on target to reach our, our expected growth goals. So I'd be happy to, to um, answer any questions, but to not read through that, you'll see every building has uh, for you a chart listed with their RIT score, again, in areas of reading and math, and um, broken down by any subgroup that we have more than 30 students in. So in, in a couple of schools, you'll see a couple of different um, demographic lines. That's because there's 30 or more students in that building, in that demographic. Um, are there any questions from the board? Um, Mr. McDonald, yeah. I know you've, you've gone over this before, but maybe just to refresh memories of anyone watching, as well as um, possibly our, our new board member, yeah. you could give us a brief overview of what IXL is. Yeah, IXL is a, is a very interactive um, computer program that targets our um, re both reading and math. So the students take a baseline test, and then uh, it is computer adapted test or a program. So then it it, it gives them fun activities and, and introduces uh, math and reading skills, and and kind of meets the kid the students where they're at and challenges them to improve their skills in those areas. Uh, and we're able to uh, give students targeted intervention with the IXL program in the areas of both reading and math. Yes. Any other questions? Thank you. I look forward to sharing the spring data uh, at the end of the year. Thank you. Thank you. All right, and then next we will do our budget update with Mr. Rathbun. Good evening, board. Uh, tonight we're going to uh, share with you our financial presentation for the 2020. 22-2023 fiscal year uh, amendment. The amendment um, has a lot of assumptions that go into any anytime we pull together a budget. There's a, a number of assumptions that go into it. This year's even a little bit more unusual because we have some assumptions that we're now halfway through the year. We still don't know the answers to some of the some of those things. Um, specifically speaking about some of the grant opportunities and some of the sections that have been awarded in the state aid um, budget. Those have not been awarded yet, and so we have not necessarily included those in tonight's presentation. I share that with you to tell you that there are significant dollar amounts. Um, so what we're presenting tonight is our best look at what we know today, but that could very much change uh, tomorrow or the days after as we get more and more information about some of the different categoricals and, and grants that we are uh, assuming that we'll still receive yet this year. So um, the first slide here that we have is a very high level uh, analysis of our budget. Uh, in the first column, you've got our 21-22 actual results. These are audited results. The second column you see there in yellow is the 22-23 original budget that we presented back in June to the board. Um, and then we have in that third column, the 22-23 amended budget. And that's what I'll focus most, most on. And I'll also be highlighting and speaking to some of the variances you see in that last column, uh, the differences between our original budget that we presented back in June and the budget that we are presenting here tonight. So just kind of some of the highlights though, before we get to the details, you can see there that uh, we're projecting revenues of about $75 million. That's up almost $5 million. You can see, uh, I don't know if you can see all the way out here. Hopefully you can see better on your screens. Uh, the $5 million increase there overall. 
We had our expenditures increase to about 73 million, which is a little over a $3 million increase. Um, that brings our revenue and over expenditures. So we're projecting a surplus this year of about $2.359 million. That will get added to our current fund balance of $7 million that you see there towards the bottom of that blue column to bring us to a total of just under $9.5 million in fund balance. Um, that, that equates to roughly 12.93, just under 13% of our expenditures. So um, any questions on the high level? We're gonna go through and look individually at the, at the revenue and the expenditures. So I'll, I'll have a lot more detail there, but any questions on um, some of the high level items that we're presenting here? Okay, if not. Move on to the next slide. Here we're presenting all of our revenue information. Uh, so we'll talk a little bit again about the change, the variance between our original budget and our uh, amended budget. So looking at our local sources, we have local sources. Uh, that's going to be things that we have right here in our community, revenue sources. We had some new leases that I'm sure the board's aware uh, that you approved recently for Chesterfield and New Baltimore. So that's increased our local revenue. We also have some additional revenue that we're getting from our community service SAC program that we've included in there. So you can see that's an increase over our original local sources of about $241,000. Our state and so our state sources increased pretty dramatically there. You can see about a $3 million increase over what we originally budgeted. That's a combination of a number of things. So one of it, one of the main pieces, about a million dollars relates to the foundation. So we had initially budgeted uh, $370 per pupil um, when we did our original budget. We didn't know the state hadn't given us the actual per pupil for the 22-23 school year. Came back at 450. So that was a significant increase, about a half million dollar increase for us. We also uh, ended up having an enrollment about 50 students higher than we had projected in June. So both things, great news for us. And that resulted in about a million dollars of increase uh, in our state sources. We also had several grant funding uh, opportunities that came through for school safety. That was about $600,000. We had a mental health for $600,000. You can see I'm, I'm a in the notations there, I'm referencing some of the sections. We had a 98C learning loss um, that we shared with the board. Uh, that's going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 200,000. Then we had additional 31O funds and additional 31A funds. And all of those items came together to be an increase of a little over $3 million to our state sources. Our federal sources also went up by about $2 million over our original budget. Those federal sources include uh, an increase in our ESSER 3 and 11T funds of about $782,000. We also received a child care stabilization grant um, that we, were, we knew we were going to get it. We just didn't know the amount, so we didn't include that in the original budget, but that's an increase of about $683,000. Our idea B, which is a special ed grant that we receive from the federal government, is four hundred and fifty five thousand dollars increase. And then the good news is our Title One went up by about two hundred thousand uh, dollars. I don't know if you'll remember, but in the last several years, because of uh, the fact that we we're feeding everyone and nobody was filling out the Title One forms, we had a little bit of a dip resulted in us not getting nearly as many, much in Title I funding. We were only getting about 180. Uh, this year, we're getting close to $400,000 in Title I funding. So significant increase for us there, which is fantastic for our Title I buildings. The last source is actually a decrease of about 230,000. And that was a combination of a number of things. Our ROTC program, we have only one teacher right now. So our reimbursement's down a little bit there. Uh, about $31,000. We had a little bit less in our special ed, although we received more in idea B, a little bit less in some of the funding that we get from the ISD. And then uh, our MISD enhancement millage 
we estimated just a little too much there, about $75,000. Um, so that is primarily what makes up those variances uh, that you see there of the $230,000 decrease. Any questions on revenue before I move to expense? So on the expense side here, um, same format, talk a little bit about and focus on that instruction number. You can, if you'll recall, we're uh, increasing in total, you can see on that final column, about $3,380,000 in expenses. The good news of that is that roughly 2.4 of that is included in instruction. And that's where we really want to have most of our spending in the classroom uh, for our students. So I'm, I'm happy to say that's where most of that increased spending is going. Um, what does that $2.4 million consist of? Well, we talked about the increased funding for our ESSER and 11T grant. Um, with all federal grants, it's what are, you know, we have to recognize the expense in order to recognize the revenue. For every dollar of expense we have, we get to recognize the dollar of revenue. So just like you saw the increase of $782,000 on the revenue side, we also have a corresponding increase here um, for on the expense side. And that really consists of a lot of technology, uh, instructional supplies, literacy specialists, tutors. A lot of that in, um, is being put into uh, the instructional line item there to really try and drive some of that learning that was lost over COVID. That's a lot of what that is based on. You can see there also the idea money, the 455,000. We had an increase in our GSRP grant, uh, which is great. Um, that's our early uh, childhood grant. We also had a number of other grants that we received. Um, we added six teachers uh, that that cost um, their salary cost. You can see there's about four hundred and fifty two thousand dollars for those six teachers. Um, and that allowed us to do a little bit of, uh, uh, you know, decreasing our class sizes and, and having a better teacher to pupil ratio, which, we, again, we think is one of our best supports for our students. Um, we've added some district instructional supplies of about 144000 And then uh, you'll remember probably from your last meeting, the food truck. Uh, we are charging that through to our CTE programming. And so that is actually an instructional cost of about $200,000. Okay, some of the other larger, uh, I'll touch on um, some of the other variances um, just the larger ones, the support services you can see there for pupil, $357,000 increase. Uh, we added some social workers, some counselors. Part of that's in our 310 grant, but it's still reflected here in our general fund. And so you can see there the increase for those individuals that we added. Um, there's also, uh, you can see a decrease in the general administration of about $198,000. We're actually reclassifying a few of the folks that we have here at central office to a more appropriate function. And so we actually have moved them down into the central support services. So you can see there the increase of 250, that's really that 198 that's moving out of one category and moving down into the other. So it's just kind of a, a trading, if you will, there. Uh, we also had a decrease in our pupil transportation. Um, initially going into the year. Uh, we did not know if we were going to get our uh, bond passed. And so we had budgeted initially to purchase some buses out of our transportation um, because we knew we had to do that to keep our fleet uh, healthy and keep it up to date. And so um, we're able to back some of that out because we'll be purchasing those buses out of the bond. So um, that kind of Gives you the highlights there. Our community services, you see that went up about 293. Again, that's where that SAC site uh, and that SAC revenue is coming through some of our um, monies for the grant that we received. Any questions on expenditures? Okay. So you're probably familiar with this chart. I think we've shared it with you before. Um, if you go back to, you know, even before 2010-11, you would kind of see that that really kind of, we had a higher fund balance, you know, back in 2007, 2008. 
it came down to 2011. We we're just, you know, at that 0.44, went back up to 11.29, back to 2.93. And now we're up, as we talked about, projecting to be at about 12.93. The reason I like to share this with you is, you know, we, we, we would like to get off the roller coaster ride here a little bit. Um, for us, uh, what we really would like to see is we'd like to see that um, graph on the far right side climb to about 15% and then just kind of level out because we think that's a problem, you know, right within a percent or two of where we need to be in order to uh, make sure that we have adequate resources to address changes in our operations, adequate resources when the state, you know, they don't pay us in September. So we have to make sure that we have enough money in the bank to make our payrolls in September because we don't receive state aid. So those are really kind of some of the main factors that we want to make sure we have enough money to sustain and be healthy as an organization, be able to react if we need to, um, you know, and, and go a certain way uh, academically if, if, the uh, board and, and the superintendent require us to do that. So that's, that's what we're trying to do there. Um, that's our goal. I'll flip to the next slide here. So generally, we're recommending that we try and get to that 15%. That's what the state recommends as being healthy. Um, that's about triple what the, you know, the financial stress um, indicates here in the state of Michigan is 5%. So uh, and that's why we went into treasury oversight, but we are now out of that and headed in the right direction. Again, I'm just kind of highlighting for you here some of the reasons for uh, wanting to have that level of fund balance. And again, reduce our cash flow borrowing, provide resources for un unforeseen expenditures and academic initiatives. So that is the presentation for this evening on budget. If there's any questions on the budget, I'd be happy to take those at this time. Yeah. Okay, hearing none, I uh, will conclude my presentation. Have a good evening. Thank you. Um, so in light of the presentation, um, you have a, there's a recommendation that the board, um, is there a motion to approve the amended budget for 22-23 as was just presented before us? I'll make that motion. Support. Um, further discussion? My only comment would be that they've seen a tremendous improvement and uh, it's been a very collective effort. I know with Central and the Finance Committee and, and all of that. So fantastic job. Okay, go ahead and call the roll. Mr. Vendatelli? Yes. Ms. Knox? Yes. Ms. Berkmeyer? Yes. Mr. Richards? Yes. And Mr. DeRue? Yes. All right, motion passes. Uh, next, we have a bond ratification resolution. Um, so the recommendation is that the board approve the bond ratification resolution as was pre as presented um, to the board packet. Is there a motion to approve the bond ratification resolution? A motion. I will second. Any discussion on this one? Mr. Benatelli? Yes. Ms. Knox? Yes. Ms. Berkmeyer? Yes. Mr. Richards? Yes. Mr. DeRue? Yes. All right. Motion passes. Uh, we'll move next to a field trip request. We have two tonight. Uh, first, the Anchor Bay High School Theater and Forensics is planning to travel to Mackinac Island Grand Hotel for the MSCI Spring State Forensics Tournament, May 18th through 21st of this year. And then uh, middle school South and North bridge building teams will travel to MDOT State Competition in Lansing this year, April 27th to 28th. And the recommendation is of course to approve the high school theater and forensics, as well as the middle school bridge building teams uh, field trips. 
Is there a motion for that? So moved. Is there a second? I'll second. Any other discussion? Just a quick question. I saw this in the um, board package. Just kind of curious. Theater and forensics. So they put on a play and then they solve crimes. No, no, no. <laughs> forensics is it's a type of it's a different type of theater where they. Um, a little it's more like, ad lib. Yeah, it's like say. ad lib and things like that. And like they read yeah, poetry, yeah. they um read story. I was on the forensics team. Uh you read stories in a very uh animated way, things like that. So it's kind of like single theater, like you know, like an individualized piece yeah. of theater. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> You're not solving crimes. That's <laughs> <laughs> true. Um, okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. And last item of new business is an award recommendation for bus cameras. Um, on January 17th of this year, the district accepted nine bids for digital bus video surveillance. After an exhaustive review, administration is recommending awarding the bid to ProVision Video Systems. Uh, ProVision was not the lowest qualified bidder, but it is the belief that ProVision were of superior quality and that the software associated was very easy to use and offered a number of features that other vendors could not offer. Um, accordingly, it is the recommendation that ProVision uh, receive the contract to install digital video systems on each of the district's 44 buses. The amount of the award is $114,256. Uh, so the recommendation is to award the bus cameras as presented. Is there a motion for this award? I'll make the motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Any discussion? Was there a timeline on the install when they would start the install? Yeah, our, our plan is it's to have timeline for install is to have them spring break, correct? Do we, uh, maybe they were emailed, but do we have all nine bids somewhere? Yeah. we. Can we see it? Oh, not in front of you, but we have them available. Yeah, I'd like to see them in in future. Any uh, any awards. Um, awards and and bids we put out. I know I would like yeah, to see the all the all the bids mm -hmm. uh, by company and and uh, um, cost. I mean, we're going to be with the bond and everything, looking at a lot of bids coming up, but I'd like to see everything. Mm -hmm. Here's a copy. I, I don't know how I can copy. But... Yeah, it's, it's, so you have a copy? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I don't sure yeah. So it was email. So if I missed it, that's that's on me. I was just asking if it was. Yeah, please. John, there's a summary there, but are you asking for the full bid package, each vendor, or you just the summary? Or just the breakdown summary on certain things i want to see the full bid packet that there's a lot in the details especially on as you know you you deal with this a lot and i know i deal with it in a professional manner all the time so there's there's a lot devils in the details so um this is good for now but yeah going forward i'd like to see those okay uh go ahead and call the roll Mrs. Knox, yes. Mr. Richards, yes. Ms. Berkmeyer, yes. Mr. DeBru, yes. Mr. Benditelli, yes. All right, uh, motion passes. Next item uh, we have is one uh, closed session item. Um, board is moving. We'll move to closed session for a student discipline hearing pursuant to Open Meetings Act Section 8B. Is there a motion to enter closed session? I'll make that motion. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Oh, sorry, no. Oh, has to be roll call. Okay, uh, Mr. Richards? 
Yes. Ms. Knox? Yes. Ms. Berkmeyer? Yes. Mr. DeRue? Yes. Mr. Ben Sutley? Yes. All right. Uh, we'll go into closed session at 735.
Ja, hier irgendwie. Okay, um, it's 9.34. We will um, accept a motion to reconvene from closed session. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? All right, we'll reconvene. Um, Pursuant to our closed session, um, I'll accept a motion uh, for action regarding student discipline. Uh, make a motion to expel student number 9119 for 180 days, reduced to the end of the current school year, provided the following conditions are met. Student must continue more intensive counseling, including a visit to the Macomb County Youth Home. Uh, must Parents must sign off on two-way communication with our counselors to the student's counselor. Um, must Student must attend Anchor Bay Summer School as assigned by Mrs. Van Hall. The student must attend weekly sessions with Anchor Bay staff for academic support. And the student shall not have any further discipline or any infractions before 180 school days or days held in abeyance will be reinstated. Okay, I will accept that motion. Is there a second of support? Support. Okay, further discussion? Mr. DeRue? Yes. Ms. Knox, yes. Ms. Berkmeyer? Yes. Mr. Richards? Yes. Mr. Benatelli? Yes. All right. Motion passes. Uh, we will move to board comments, points of pride. Uh, Mr. Richards? Anchor Bay High School will be hosting a career fair Thursday, March 16th from 6 to 7.30 p.m. The event is open to the public. This is one of my favorite events. The Seniors versus Staff Scholarship Basketball Game is Thursday, March 9th at the high school. All proceeds go to the scholarship for the class of 2023. The Anchor Bay Education Association is having their annual Night at the Races scholarship event on Friday, May 5th. Save the date for a great event. The scholarship basketball game was moved to Tuesday, March 7th. Correction. Basketball game was moved to Tuesday, March 7th. Hot off the press. New Baltimore Parks and Rec is hosting Youth Soccer Skills Clinic at Lighthouse Elementary School March 1st through March 29th. The clinic is for ages 8 to 14. Ira Township Baseball and Softball Registration is going on if interested. IraLittleLeague.org. Anchor Bay Middle School North and South Baseball Camp for 6th, 7th, and 8th graders is March 18th at the high school. Anchor Bay Softball 2023 Youth Clinic for grades 3 through 8 is Saturday, March 25th at the Anchor Bay High School. Anchor Bay Youth Lacrosse for 1st through 8th grade is March 14th through, the, through June 4th. The Anchor Bay High Sports Boosters Reverse Raffle is March 3rd. Congratulations to the Anchor Bay dance team that performed in nationals in Orlando. They came in third in palm, third in jazz, fourth in solo. That's nationwide. They also received the champion award, which recognizes a strong new team with a strong new coach. Awesome job. I'd like to thank the middle school South Makerspace students from the first semester. They helped assemble chair and stand racks for the middle school South band. These stands were also donated by the Anchor Bay boosters. Thank you. The Anchor Bay District-wide wellness fair is Saturday, March 18th from 10 to noon. Our high school hosts the club will be doing mini workshops. The fair will be in the commons at the Anchor Bay High School. Congratulations to Middle School North Captain of the Month, Anita Demoski. Thank you for everything that you do. Anchor Bay is hiring. We are looking for at-risk coordinators, aquatic center coordinator, custodians, coaches, paraprofessionals, and we have our anticipated teacher uh, 
teacher uh, list for next year. I'd like to also thank the Middle School North Student Council and staff that organized the 13th annual dodgeball tournament. 252 students participated, and the winning team was Team Speedway. Awesome job. I hear staff might be participating next year. Anchor Bay Preschool Open House is March 2nd from 6, 15 to 7.30 at our Early Childhood Center. The Anchor Bay Kindergarten Readiness Night is March 23rd at 6 p.m. at the High School Auditorium. Welcome to Anchor Bay. Congratulations to students of the month, middle school North, sixth grader Lila Jarek, seventh grader Clara Buchanan, and eighth grader Kylie Granicki. My points of pride this month would be this month would be congratulations to Anchor Bay HOSA Club. Uh, we have 16 students that are moving on a HOSA state competition on April 27th and 28th in Traverse City. These students competed in the HOSA regional competition at Prager High School. Awesome job and good luck. Thank you. Okay. Um, I also did have AB Varsity uh, dance on my list, but Mr. Richards covered that. I'd like to congratulate our um, three seniors who made it to the state finals for wrestling at Fort Field uh, March 3rd and 4th. They are Tristan Arnold, Troy Lushka, and Sam Schreiber. Um, good luck and leave it all on the mat. Uh, congratulations to AB Varsity Cheer. They are back-to-back -back district champs. So they're going to go compete for regionals. Um, the excitement from that team is, is uh, really cool to see. And I um, have a few friends with, with daughters on that team, and it's, it's, a, it's very exciting over there. Um, another thing was... Our Anchor Bay Middle School North therapy dog, uh, Zola, and her human visited Michigan State um, on her day off to provide comfort and smiles to the students. And to kind of further that, um, the support for our Anchor Bay alumni that um, are now are at MSU has been great. I know of a, a story, a former cheerleader came home during their week that they were off of school and spent time with her cheer team and her coach. And it's, it's just a testament to our, our community and the way everyone gathers around that, even though you've gone away to college, you're always home. Um, so that was really nice to see Zola get out and also have some of our students come back and find support um, where they grew up. So kudos to everyone involved. And that is all I have. Okay. It's getting late, I'll keep it short. Everybody drive safe tomorrow. And thanks for uh, canceling school. <laughs> Did anyone know yet? Where you been to? I don't have anything additional to add tonight either. Um, and we'll move to legislative updates. Yeah, the the only thing from we're the governor put on her budget. We were hoping to get the House or the Senate budget because they're telling us they're going to pass it by April 1st. Um, however, between the, the weather and the MSU incident, so that hasn't happened yet. So hopefully that comes out sometime in the next four weeks. And if they can, it would be the first time, if it happens by April, that'd be the first time, I think, in the history of the state. So, um, and that would be good, because then you wouldn't see what we had earlier, where we're guessing for the budget in June, because we have to have it by June 30th, and then the budget passes after that. So then here we are doing huge budget amendments. So that and that's it. Okay. Uh, board committees. Um, I know the finance committee met, but that was kind of covered in tonight's meeting as well. Um, and then the buildings and site committee is meeting next week, uh, Monday. So um, other than that, I will accept a motion to adjourn. So moved. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? And meeting adjourns at 943. Good night.